Lesson 22. Gathering Resources The most versatile resource in Foxhall is that of basic materials, or BMATs. They are used to build basic fortifications, town buildings, weapons, and low-tech munitions and vehicles. BMATs begin their life as scrap, and this is exactly what we want to harvest in order to refine them into basic materials, which will be dealt with in the next lesson. To find scrap, first open your map and look for the nearest screw icon and head towards it. This is the location of a scrap field, and within it, you'll find scrap nodes from which to mine. While learning the ropes of logistics, it is quite possible to walk your harvested resources to and fro, especially as there are generally scrap and component fields within reasonable distance to one's home and spawn town. As you can see over here, here is a scrap field, and just over here is a component field. But eventually, you will want to get yourself a transport truck, so as not to break your frail human legs. Again, this will be covered in a later tutorial video. Scrap can be mined in two ways. Either with a basic hammer, the same type that every soldier spawns with, as you can see in my backpack, or with a sledgehammer, as you can also see in my backpack. However, the sledgehammer requires a technology level 3 workshop in order to be constructed and requisitioned meaning that in the early days of a war you'll probably be limited to your hammer. But even in the later days of a war, your basic hammer is just as sturdy and reliable. The main benefit of a sledgehammer over a normal hammer is that in terms of scrap collection, it gathers 20 units per hit, as you can see over here. I'm just going to drop this, now equip my hammer, and then with the hammer, you'll see that 10 scrap is gathered per hit, but the hammer is just ever so slightly faster. An unharvested scrap field consists of a maximum of 10 nodes, each node containing 50 scrap, if mined with a hammer, and 60 scrap if mined with a sledgehammer due to its increased multiplier. This means that a full scrap field will yield 500 scrap to a logistic soldier equipped with a hammer and 600 to a soldier with a sledgehammer. And let's test this right now. We're going to approach the scrap node over here. We have our hammer equipped. We have no scrap in our inventory. And let's start knocking away. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. <laughs> there we go, the node is finished. We open our inventory and we have 50 scrap and luckily a technology part, which we will cover in a future lesson. Now, let us equip our sledgehammer and drop the scrap that we have a base number to go from. Now let's find a virgin node and begin mining with our sledgehammer. Here we go, this looks like a prime one. Off we go. Ah, the sound of that impactful sledgehammer. Makes you feel like a true logistics warrior. And there we go, the mine is finished. And here we have 60 scrap with the sledgehammer as opposed to the 50 with the hammer. Additionally, a new scrap node will respawn every 200 seconds in the scrap field. As a quick note in terms of equipping your hammer or your sledgehammer in case you missed the earlier lessons, open your backpack or your inventory by pressing tab, left click on your hammer to equip it to your primary weapon slot, or your primary slot in this case, close your inventory and press 1 and your hammer will be equipped. Likewise, press tab again to open your inventory, left click on your equipment, your first equipment slot, it removes the hammer, and then you can left click the sledgehammer to place it in the primary slot. Close your inventory and press 1 again and your sledgehammer will be equipped. Again, you don't need to remove the sledgehammer before you can load the hammer into your primary slot. You may simply have one loaded, left click the other one and it takes its place. Once you are satisfied or your inventory is full of scrap, we have a little bit of scrap in our inventory and if we come over to our truck, we have a bit more scrap in there, and that's enough for demonstration purposes. However, imagine our backpack is full of scrap, as we would want to run these resources back, because this truck does not yet exist. So once you're satisfied, or your backpack is full, you'll probably want to run these raw resources back to your nearest, or most probably your hometown's manufacturing plant, for refinement into basic BMAT materials. In order to find your nearest, or your hometown's manufacturing plant, press M to open up your map, and look for the nearest, but again, generally you want to take it back to your hometown's manufacturing plant, look for the hammer icon on the map, and that is your hometown's or your nearest manufacturing plant.
The next raw resource that we wish to collect is that of components, which can be refined into R mats or refined materials. In order to find your nearest location for a component field, which looks like a destroyed tank field, press M and search for the nearest icon indicating a nut. And here we have, just above Ocean Watch, a nut icon. That means that there is a component field of dead and destroyed tanks waiting for us. Let's get to it. As a quick note, I also wish to make mention that although the scrap and component fields will usually be fairly close to your spawning town hall, scrap fields will always be much closer than the nearest component field. The nearest component field generally being at your nearest pocket or natural expansion. This applies to fuel and sulfur as well, but generally your components will be your next closest available resource, again depending upon the map. And here we have arrived at our component field. As you can see it is a graveyard of tanks. It is also important to know that the two tanks that you see over here, the rusted over ones without their uh, movable turret on the top, are just here for aesthetic purposes. The actual nodes of a component field are these three destroyed tank bodies over here. Since components are a higher tier resource than scrap, they can only be mined or harvested using a sledgehammer. Let's put this to demonstration. Let's equip our hammer first of all, and try and hit at a tank. Aha, another tool is required, and the hammer is not super effective. Right, now let's equip our sledgehammer instead. Go back to the tank, left click to hit, and there we start gathering. There are three resource nodes, as I indicated, in a component field, each of these tank shells, and each hit of the sledgehammer yields five components. There we go, the component node is now empty, and we have gathered 45 components. This is because the other five components I had mined previously and are in the truck over there. In turn, this means that since there are three nodes, an entire component field has 150 components available to be harvested. Each node, much like the scrap field, respawns after 200 seconds. As you can see by the orange backpack icon, components are rather heavy, leading to heavy encumbrance pretty quickly. This means that we can walk them back to where we need to get them rather easily, although it's going to take a while. But as indicated earlier, eventually you will want to get yourself a transport truck for your logistics purposes. And indeed, just to check that each component node or destroyed tank does indeed contain 50 components, let's try that again. Let's approach this fresh one over here. Let's drop all these components and begin mining once again. <laughs> There we go. That's the first state. And there we go, 50 components. And that was a good illustration that these nodes exist in various states. As you saw, when the metal of this node became a little ablated, that means there were 25 components remaining. Whereas this node over here in its full, I suppose, not completely functional state would yield 50. The same is indicated by sulfur. It has various states of existence as well, but we will cover that shortly. And as with scrap, once you are satisfied with your component collection, got 95 components here. We go into our truck and we should have five, I believe, from previous mining. We can ferry these back to the manufacturing plant in order to turn them into refined materials or R mats, useful for purposes around the game. Let us now go on to harvesting the third raw resource type, that of sulfur. Let's open our map and we look for this little rock icon over here, or as it is called, the sulfur icon. And that is an incorrect spelling. I mean, where, where is the pH, honestly? Where's that pH? Right, American and British differences aside, if you look on your map for the rock icon, these indicate the location of sulfur fields. Let's head there now. 
and here we go, we have arrived at the sulfur field. I can hardly breathe. <coughs> Breathing aside, here we are, amongst the sulfur nodes. As of the 0.4 update, sulfur nodes have been changed. Each node now yields 30 sulfur in total, and its respawn timer has been reduced from 3 hours per node to 1. Even so, this is a long respawn time, which means that XMATs or EMATs are probably the hardest raw resource to refine from sulfur. Let's now put this to the test. In terms of sulfur nodes, it doesn't matter if you harvest them with either a hammer or a sledgehammer. Both will harvest sulfur nodes. However, a sledgehammer will yield 4 sulfur per hit, whereas a normal hammer will yield 2 per hit. Both, however, will only mine 30 sulfur from a node. Let's equip our hammer, head over to this node, and begin gathering sulfur. As you can see, much like the component state animation, it has now been reduced and it's now in its third state of existence. And after this, the node should be gone. There we go. We open our inventory, and there we have 30 sulfur. Now let's drop the sulfur, equip our sledgehammer, go over to another node, and begin gathering once again. We hit it once, and there we have 4 sulfur. It's in its primary state of existence. It's been reduced to its second tier animated state, reduced to its third, and the node is finished. Open our inventory. After some experimentation with the 0.4 update, I must edit a slight retraction. Harvesting sulfur with a sledgehammer will indeed yield 32 sulfur per node, as opposed to 30 coming from the hammer. See, we are never too old to learn. The node is finished, we've mined it with the sledgehammer, and we have 32 sulfur. In terms of raw resources, sulfur is the highest tier that exists, which explains its long respawn time. This means that anything created from XMATs or EMATs or explosive materials are probably the most valuable in the game, and thus any munitions created from explosive materials should be used wisely and sagaciously by any soldier. As with scrap and components, once you're satisfied with your sulfur haul, open up your map, find your nearest manufacturing plant, or your hometown hall's manufacturing plant, as indicated over here, and transport them back for refinement. Let's now move on to our fourth and final raw resource, that of fuel. Let's open our map, let's find a fuel depot, which is indicated by a jerry can icon that you can see spread out all over the map. That is the location of an oil drum fuel depot location, and let's head there. And here we have arrived at a fuel field. Phew, I can finally fill up my truck. Fuel is probably one of the nicest raw resources for a logistics player as it requires no refinement and can be used immediately after it has been harvested. You can take the fuel from the fuel field we've harvested four so far. We can open up our truck's inventory, transfer it, and immediately our transport truck is filled. How wonderful. The same applies, you can harvest fuel from the fuel field, take it back to town. Uh, generally, you'll want to take it back to your vehicle factory, deposit it there for any players to use. At a fuel field, there are three nodes from which to harvest or collect fuel. Each node contains approximately 30 fuel or 30 jerry cans worth, and the entirety of the field containing about 96 or 90 fuel, depending whether you harvest with a hammer or with a sledgehammer. We have a fresh node over here. Let's begin harvesting this with our hammer. And much like components and with sulfur, you will see the animation existence state of the fuel degrade over time. Let's reach its second tier, and soon the drums will have collapsed. And there we go. The node is now finished. We open our inventory, and we have 30 fuel. Let's do the same. Let's drop off this fuel. Equip our sledgehammer, go over to this node, and begin harvesting it with our sledgehammer. Let's put aside the ludonarrative dissonance that we can gather fuel by smashing it with a sledgehammer. We are beating these oil drums into the shape of a jerry can. Once the node is finished, we open our inventory, and there we go. 
32 units of fuel. As a final note regarding a fuel field, the respawn time of fuel nodes is fairly high, so you'll never have to worry about when and if you should come and harvest fuel. If you need it, you should come and harvest it without any worry about the nodes having a long respawn time. There we go. The node has just respawned and now has another 30 or 32 fuel, depending. Once you are satisfied with your fuel haul, you'll want to transport it back to town. Unlike scrap, components, and sulfur, generally you don't want to take fuel to a manufacturing plant since it's already in a usable state. By and large, you will want to take it back to the vehicle factory and deposit it in storage boxes just outside the vehicle factory for any players who need fuel, or fresh vehicles that have been built, such as half tracks, transport trucks, and light tanks, to be fueled immediately. Otherwise, you can always ask your quartermaster where fuel is needed at the time. Again, the role of the quartermaster will be covered in a later tutorial video. And there you go, soldier. You're now a regular logistics player. You know how to harvest, mine, collect resources, and know where to take them once your inventory is full. In essence, you are now a regular peon. Work, work.